Hi, this is Simon from HomeKit News, and today we're looking at the new Acara Hub M2, a hub that I've personally been waiting for since it was first leaked back in May of 2019. After testing this out since last August, it's time to share some details. So we'll start with the packaging and as you can see this is yet another exciting product from Acara. This time I've got the Chinese version I got back in August but it does have the all important works with HomeKit badge and aside from some specs the box does have a few of the many features it has up its sleeve including official Zigbee certification and a built-in IR transceiver. The IR blaster allows you to control these IR based devices within the Acara app but it also allows you to control them within scenes and automations which I'll go into in more depth later. Further features listed include support for up to 128 child devices although there is a slight catch with that which I'll touch on later. It does have double Wi-Fi antennas for a stronger Wi-Fi signal but more excitingly you can actually have a wired connection to this box if you wish. It uses Zigbee 3 as I've mentioned before which includes better management and efficiency for your child devices and as it's HomeKit compatible you also get Siri integration of course which also includes Siri shortcuts options. Now if you're already in possession of the recently released EU version of the M2 you might notice the packaging here looks a bit different and you may also notice that the box here is sporting the older Cara logo. It's still the same device though so it's of no consequence. Let's open the box then and have a quick look at the M2 in all its glory. So first off is the manual, in Chinese of course, and this contains one of three instances of the HomeKit code. Next up is the M2 itself, but just before we get to that, below that is something that we've already seen with the MeSmart gateway I reviewed almost exactly a year ago, and something that is going to be a very welcome change from the original Agar hub, namely a separate USB power supply instead of a built-in plug. So the first thing we get is the USB plug itself, nicely in black to match the hub itself, and then a separate USB to micro USB power cable. It's great to see the cable also comes in matching black. Now as you can see the power cable is USB A to micro USB, so no USB C here I'm afraid, but as it's a standard USB type of cable it means any suitable USB power supply will do nicely. That's the contents of the box, so let's go back and have a quick gander at the M2 itself. It's all in black and includes another instance of the HomeKit code on the base, so let's proceed with peeling off the cellophane so we can have a closer look at the details for this rather nice looking hub, or gateway if you prefer. We'll dive closer into the details and specs now with the front of the M2 first, which really only has one small colour LED along with a button below that. The LED itself changes colour depending on the function and the button is basically for pairing and resetting. Onto the back of the M2 and you'll find the first of three connections is here with an Ethernet port for a more stable wired connection or 2.4GHz Wi-Fi if you prefer wireless. I went for the wired option and it has been rock solid. Next is the micro USB port for powering the device. Now it would have been nice to get USB-C, but I won't be unplugging it enough for it to matter to be honest. The third and final port is standard USB-A, but it's not in use at this time. Maybe an update will make use of it later, we don't know. When it comes to the size of the M2, it's slightly wider than the previous hub's 80mm, coming in at 100mm wide, but it's not quite as deep at just under 31mm compared to the M1 at 41mm. The top of the device has nothing at all besides the newer Cara logo engraved into the textured lid, with the sides of the device not being textured, probably due to the need for translucent plastic for the IR function. Finally onto the base, which is mostly about its connectivity, one of which I've not mentioned so far. So it uses 2.4GHz Wi-Fi but only for connecting to your network, not other Wi-Fi devices. You've got your HomeKit code on the base as we've already seen, and it also uses Bluetooth 5, although it's not in use at the moment. It's officially Zigbee certified, and most importantly, we get to see the speaker grill that serves for alarms and notifications, etc. One minor but possibly relevant piece of information is regarding the LED on the front, which displays different colours depending on a few factors. Now for the most part the LED will display a solid blue colour, but whenever any of the three alarm modes are activated, the LED will flash red twice to let you know this before returning to blue. 
If you disarm any of these modes, the LED will flash green twice, but once again returns to blue. Finally, we'll jump over to the Akara app to demonstrate adding a new child device. Now, when you add a child device using Zigbee, you're required to choose a hub, assuming you have more than one, of course. In this example, I'm selecting an Akara motion sensor. Now, once you've selected the M2 as your hub, the LED will flash pink until pairing is complete, or if you cancel the pairing. One question that gets asked all the time is which child devices are exposed to HomeKit, which is understandable. Now, without going into a lot of detail, what's exposed to HomeKit with one hub might not necessarily be exposed via another hub. So it's impossible to give you a complete answer. However, I have tested a few devices that I'm listing here from both Akara and Mija that definitely work with my M2 and are exposed to HomeKit. Now you must bear in mind that I'm using the Chinese M2 on the China server, and so an international hub will have different devices or possibly not expose some of the same devices on a different server. The last part of this overview focuses briefly on the infrared capabilities of the M2. Now Akara state that the remote function is 360 degrees, which I take to mean that the signal shoots out from the circumference of the M2, so it doesn't need to be facing a specific direction. In this next example, you can see that I've already added a couple of IR control devices to the M2, namely a light strip and an AC unit. If we look at the controls available for the AC, you can see it pretty much offers all the functionality available for this particular brand. Now, when it comes to the light strip I added, this is a very cheap and dumb strip that came with a basic IR remote, but I was able to create a custom remote in the app to control as few or as many parts of the remote that I wanted, which in this case is just a few basic colours and an on-off toggle button. The Akara app gives you a selection of popular devices you can add, and from there, a brand and model. Now, once you've chosen a particular device from an amazingly long list of potential products, you should be able to start adding the device in just a few small steps. In this case, I've chosen amplifiers and gone with Apple as a brand. I didn't actually know they made amps, but there you go. Anyway, you can then get the M2 to start firing out basic IR controls to see which ones work so that the M2 can build up the correct set of controls for your device. Now, if your device isn't listed, like with the light strip I showed you earlier, you can still create a custom remote and then still get the M2 to learn the controls from the original device remote and built up a set of controls that way, so you should be covered. The great thing about being able to add IR devices to the Akara app is that they can also be used in scenes and automations just like a normal child device, so the potential is mind-boggling. Lastly, onto the pros and cons, and to be honest, there aren't any real cons to talk of, so it's going to be a list of pros on this occasion. Now, I'm really happy about the USB power supply, which makes things a lot more convenient for pretty much everyone. The Ethernet port is another big plus for me, and with Wi-Fi 2, you're really spoiled for choice. The increased amount of child devices you can add is welcome, although I can't personally see myself even reaching half this number. I'm glad that Sakara are now certified to be Zigbee compliant, although we'll have to wait and see what the obvious benefits will be. Uh, the IR capabilities I've just touched upon are another big plus and could lead to some exciting automations. And finally, with the M2, we now have all four alarm modes as well as full sync with HomeKit. So I hope this video has whetted your appetite for the new Akara M2, but if you do want more information, do check out the full in-depth review on our website using the link below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.